Hello everyone, thank you for joining me today. Tejas here and today I want to talk about some of the difficulties that I have had channeling creativity into my life as a working professional and some tips and tricks that I have used to overcome these barriers. We live in a global, highly consumerist and maximalist social culture. No matter where we turn, it is really easy to consume, whether it be clothing or merchandise or media, entertainment, food, there's just a lot of consumption. It's easy to feel like we want all these things because of all the ads that we see, as well as the nature of the social media applications that are so prevalent today. Ultimately, where this leaves us is with our minds held hostage, whether we know it or not. And most importantly, it's really hard to have those moments of pause where feelings of acceptance with who we are and where we're at come from, moments of pause where clarity comes from, and as relevant to this video, moments where the seeds of creativity can begin to blossom. So I worked as a software engineer for six years and I found that as a working professional in the environment we exist in today, which is very consumer centric, it's very difficult to have those moments of creation. And I often found that some of my most creative thoughts happened at the most inopportune times during the day. And this would often happen during meetings or it would happen while I was coding or on my way to work or while I was taking a shower. It would usually be times when I couldn't act on these creative thoughts or even really spend a lot of time to write them down. So my first inclination was that these are attributes of the monkey mind, which is a description of any thoughts or thought patterns that distract you from the main task at hand. I just treated these thoughts as a distraction with the hope that I would be able to exercise creativity or think of creative thoughts after work or whenever I had idle time. And this wasn't initially super effective because I would have a pre-apportioned time where I would just list ideas in a journal. Anything that I had meditated away while I was focusing on something else, I would try to then draw upon all that inspiration at one specific time. This wasn't super effective because it's really hard to force these ideas to come all at once. It felt a little too structured for me. And a lot of creativity in my experience is highly unstructured. So all that would remain in my life was the lack of creativity or the inability to focus. But I was so sick of consumption and really felt like this was a problem. So I set out to figure out the best way to be able to capture this inspiration in such a way that I can then act on it later. And in doing so, I found quite a few different ways to capture that inspiration as best as possible, compartmentalize it, and then later act on this. The key is capturing the idea as best as possible upon conception and then being able to go back to that idea later when you have more time. There are three methods I have found that are extremely useful. And the common attribute of all of these methods is that they are very useful especially in situations where you are doing something else. This will allow you to quickly capture those ideas and then resume activities. So the simplest way that I do this is I just use Apple Notes. And whenever I feel some sort of distracting thought that I find to be creatively inspiring, I will jot down as thoroughly as possible the stream of thoughts that I'm thinking. And once that's done, I just go back to what I was doing. I found this to be extremely effective for allowing me to refocus because I feel like my mind feels relatively reassured once it is jotted down that creative thought to not go back to it at the time. Another option that I use to capture ideas in the moment, especially when I don't have my phone around or it's inconvenient to have it around with me all the time, is I use voice memos on my Apple Watch. This is extremely useful when I'm sleeping, but also when I'm traveling or whatever, when my phone just isn't around. I'll just record a stream of consciousness for however, maybe one to two minutes, just saying whatever comes to mind that I'm thinking about. Then after that, it's easy to resume whatever I was doing previously. And the final way I capture inspiration is through images and videos from my environment. And I categorize them on a custom Pinterest board. So there's this really cool feature on Pinterest where you can upload your pictures to a custom board. And so I use this all the time because oftentimes, whether it be when I'm just going for a walk or I just see something in my environment that I find is inspiring, I'll just capture it with my phone and upload it to Pinterest. 
to a relevant board. And it'll, it can, this can be pretty much anything. So right now I'm gonna take a picture of, let's say this ceiling fan here. It's a pretty cool ceiling fan, bam. And so now what I can do is I can just, after I've taken the picture of my ceiling fan, share it to Pinterest. And so now you can see I have all these different boards I could save it to. And so let's say I took a picture of a fan so I can just create a board. I can say fans, let's say I can make it a secret board and then I can save to my board. And so once that happens, I can go into Pinterest and say, okay, look, bam. And I have a ceiling fan picture right here. And so I have like a lot of different boards for this. So like whether it be recipes, sometimes I'll see like really cool recipes that I want to replicate in my environment or I'll see them online. I just upload everything into like recipes or let's say i even have a travel board so for this one i just take pictures when i travel of whatever i think looks pretty cool um and yeah i just upload it to this board it can be pictures of myself it can be whatever let's say you take pictures of something you think is cool you can then afterwards select some of these pictures and then using machine learning or what have you recommendation system pinterest can show you similar sort of results so this works really well for fashion but it can work for anything really and so that is pretty much how i go about capturing things you'll notice that whether it's with apple notes or voice memos or with using pinterest all of these require minimal time to just capture whatever i thought it is with apple notes i can just put my phone out and type it out or if it's something that i have a hard time translating into text i can just speak a stream of consciousness into my watch or if it's really hard to even say having a way to take pictures and videos of something and upload it into some sort of relevant compartment on Pinterest is also really nice too. So that way it doesn't take me away from whatever it is that I'm doing. And so then now, whenever I have blocks of time where I can work on creative pursuits, having these sorts of captured sources of inspirations have gone a long way in helping me take actionable steps towards creation. And in all this effort trying to capture that creative thought, I have found that that inspirational thought is a future art piece in its purest form. And every step that is taken from that initial thought into that art piece will reduce the value. And so becoming a better creative is being able to bridge that gap between what you have initially conceptualized and what it is that you create. The better you become at creating things, the greater the frustration is as the gap becomes smaller. For example, let's say I'm thinking of a really cool dance video or talking video idea in my head. And in the process of even saying what it is or writing it down, there's information that is lost when trying to translate it. Very simply, for example, the English language or my understanding of the English language may not be good enough to be able to capture that very complex idea. So already from the jump, you're losing some of that inspiration. And then from there, there is the actual recording. There is the capabilities of the tools that you have, which will then possibly, most likely, degrade or not fully capture exactly what you were thinking further until the point where the final product, though it could be really cool in the eyes of others or even yourself, that difference becomes apparent. And as that difference becomes smaller, it becomes very frustrating to fill that gap. But I digress. I'm still pretty early on as a creative, but I'm really happy that nowadays I can capture these ideas efficiently in a way that doesn't distract me from the tasks that I have at hand, but still be able to act on these great insights that I have in my day-to-day -day life when I have time. And that's everything I had to say today. Thank you for listening and I'll see you next time.